All right, y'all. Little update here from the Scrap Kingdom. We're uh, we're tra we're transitioning. <laughs> we're uh, transitioning from scrapping channel, really, and. We'll do a car shop type of deal here. So basically, I, I couldn't make a video of it. I tried to, but I was having problems with my, my phone. And besides, I was using the saws a lot, so it make a lot of noise. But anyway, I completely chopped off the back end of this pickup truck. Looks kind of weird. Just a cab. Took the differential off. Cut up the frame. That bumper kind of fell apart. It's like two thirds of it right there. And oh, I, I threw this brake pad in there, but besides that, this is all rust sweepings from me cutting up the truck. 40 pounds of rust so far. There's a little uh, rust laying on the gas tank, and there's some that I haven't been able to sweep up underneath the truck. I gotta cut that chunk of frame off right here later on. Right there, and that will release that spring. I'm leaving the drive shaft in for now because the tail shaft of the transmission will start leaking. And I kind of don't want that. There's some parts in the inside that I want to save. I guess, I don't know. Maybe even the seats. Because the seats in my trucks are all, they're beyond shot. I could also use this window right here for my white truck. It's too bad the windshield's got a crack in it because I could really use that windshield. I'm going to pop the hood open here, and uh, I'm going to begin dismantling everything. Take the fenders off, the, the grill, headlights, all that, the hood. So pulling the engine and trans out won't be such a nightmare. I'm not sure about the core support, if it's welded to the body itself. Or if it's bolted on. You know, some cars, you know, like the Ford Econoline band have uh, the core support. You could dismantle at least part of it to get the engine out. This fender is held on by a few screws there. A little handy work light right there. And it has a hood light. I don't know, it's, it's kind of nice. Too bad this grill is like smashed right there. I suppose that's fixable somehow. <sighs> but mainly I want to take this motor out and put this in my Chevy uh, back at home. Because, um, I don't know, a little, a little while back, kind of a while back, uh, I don't know, I blew a head gasket and the antifreeze got mixed with the oil 
and I went to go and take it apart. I took a uh, the intake manifold apart and then I, the work stopped. <laughs> but uh, the trans was slipping on the thing anyway, so. I don't know. And this gas tank has got like some kind of a strap on there. Anywho, that's what's going on here. We're transitioning. There's parts in here that I could use. Um, the windows on my uh, the white pickup truck don't go all the way up. The seat is definitely in better shape. I don't even know, 200, 247,000. Hmm. No headliner. I could definitely use the steering column. Because I think the... I think the cancel cam works. Yep. Got an ignition lock on here that still works. And it's got a radio that might work. I don't know, I've, I've had this laying around the compound, what, for quite a while, like three, four years. It's been sitting back there, and I've been dreaming of uh, getting around to working on it. And finally, here I am. I, and this only half the shop is cleared out, actually, because I got, like, this mountain of garbage over there that is taking up the space of probably another car. But I'm not ready to get to that pile. We all this junk to sort through and all that. That air compressor works, but it's so powerful that it'll trip the circuit, so I can't use that. It blows the fuse. So this place needs more electricity or something. I got all these things to sort through and go through, and this John Deere right here, tear this apart. You got that Ford Mustang body right there, pedal car, but there's no workings to it. It's just a steel body. Got a hood to a Dodge Ram. I, I've been wanting to put that on my blue Dodge Ram forever because it's not bent out of shape or anything like that. So, we're getting there slowly. I don't know, I was saving these TVs for uh, Bob from Gill Skills to tear apart. I'll either move them outside or uh, tear them apart myself if they end up getting in the way, because this file's got to go. Not today, though, but it's got to go. It's taking up the space of a whole car. I ate a lot of rain last night. There we go. There's the evidence. Took the rear end off. <clears throat> I can't use the rear end on that uh, 2005 white Chevy pickup truck because this is a five lug and the 05 is a six lug. So I don't think that would work out very well. I 
And we're back to doing this with the Dodge pickup, fiddling with the brakes. You know, I found some uh, old used pads. I don't know if this one's got any more meat on it. Nope, same amount. But uh, the piston side one, the inside one was just beginning to start scraping. So time to take it off. And I went to AutoZone today, and they did not have any in stock. See right there? That's where it sucks being over 300 pounds. You go to sit down and it's like... <laughs> That's got a little meat on it. It's got more meat on it than the other one. So I went to AutoZone anyway to complete the thought. And they didn't have... Brake pads for this vehicle in stock. Oh, you have to order them. What? <laughs> You're crapping me. You gotta order brake pads, really? For a very common vehicle still, a 94 Dodge Ram? Pretty fairly commonly... Uh, uh, yeah, finding the... Finding a spot for these. I, I try to finger tighten them, you know, first because, you know, you strip the threads and it's game over. Now you're going to be replacing some. You can be fixing things that you never wanted to fix in your life. Especially if it's a vehicle that you need to be on the go all the time. Downtime. There used to be this channel. I think it's still on YouTube, but I don't think the guy uploads anymore. Uh, Jack, Jack Part, yeah. Jackpot Digger. Some scrapper from... Quebec and he used to argue with me back and forth about having multiple vehicles you know because <clears throat> them foreigners let me tell you <laughs> no really uh, people outside this country really see everything as very wasteful having multiples of anything, but what's really wasteful is time. You can't get the time back. So having, having lots of machinery, for me anyways, that's key. If you want to go back to a World War II uh, adage. Uh, part of the reason why, not the whole reason, but part of the reason why the Allies won, the United States won against Germany, the Allies as well, was because we had more machinery. Even if it wasn't as good as the German machinery, we had more and sometimes when you're kind of like in a battle type situation, which I consider scrapping kind of a battle because there are no friends in scrapping. They're, they're all your adversaries. Maybe you guys don't see it that way, and that's understandable. 
but for a true scrapper oh come out now king no really for your for your hustle scrap for your hustle type scrapper at least where i live there are no friends you could be friendly towards your fellow scrapper but Really, uh, you're in competition with everybody and everything, so. Uh, <clears throat> uh, I need something to kneel on right here to put that wheel on, because it's just a sea of mud. No other scrapping channel has litter and trash laying around. Like I never, I never like dawned on me or I never noticed really until not that long ago. Duh. <laughs> Every channel that I look at, there's not litter and trash at all. But my channel, you will find nothing but litter and trash. There's this machine. I tried getting it running. A lot of wire and a truck starter. A little variety of everything valuable, kind of, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> 